Hello and welcome to another in the How To series from Cutting Edge Training. My name's Nigel Church and I'm one of the product trainers. Today we're talking about the levels of vibration. We have two levels. We have hand and arm vibration, experienced when using hand tools or pedestrian operated machinery. And we have whole body vibration, which is the necessary readings we require when using ride-on equipment. Vibration levels are measured in meters per second and taking an average working day of eight hours, the legal limit is 2.5 meters per second squared. Now that information will always be supplied by the manufacturer of the relevant equipment and it should be somewhere within the operator's instruction manual that comes with the machine or quite often by going onto the website these days of the respective manufacturer, you can find this information quite readily available. So we have an example of some power tools here and they will all have the information in their respective operator's manuals for the machines. With power tools or hand tools like this, they refer to trigger time, which of course, as we know, we are using this item here to increase or decrease the engine speed to carry out the task required. Now this particular machine here, I've opened up the book and it actually tells me for the respective model that we have a vibration exposure time of four meters per second squared. Now, the trigger time that we mentioned, of course, is something which is very, very important, and any of these machines have high revving engines, but of course, it's also down to the maintenance of the machines, which will keep those vibration levels low. Another very, very important factor, whether it be these types of machines, walk behind mowers or ride on mowers, is the use of gloves. And these, of course, not only keep your hands warm, but in doing so, help reduce the risk of damage to your fingers through sensitive vibration. So these are a very, very important part of the equipment to be worn when using any powered machinery. So we have the brush cutters, chainsaws, hedge cutters, that type of equipment, which are very subject to uh, hand and arm vibration levels, as of course are mowers such as this, widely used in the professional ground care industry. A small walk behind rotary, a rotary that uh, hovers on a cushion of air. These do have their readings with regards hand and arm vibration levels. Now, these are two good examples of machines which we, were borrowed locally, um, and when I asked for the book, nobody could find them. Well, it didn't take very long to go onto the website, you know, for the Allen mower, and I've got the information here that I would require as the owner of that product, particularly if I'm employing people, and it gives me not only the hand and arm vibration levels, but the noise level information that I'd require as well. A quick visit to the Honda site, also gave me the information I required for this Honda here and in there once again not only do I have the hand and arm vibration levels but I also have the noise level exposure per day for the person using that machine. The hand and arm vibration is very very crucial to a person using the machinery all day long. As manufacturers, whoever they may be, we obviously carry out the tests on these machines with the engine running on a grass conditioned surface and of course everything is nice and new, blades are sharpened and balanced as one would expect. Of course it then goes into the hands of the user and what everybody forgets sometimes, and this is not a care and maintenance lecture, but we must ensure that our blades are sharp and balanced, particularly on rotaries like we have here where the blade is directly connected to the engine. So this is rotating at very, very high speed, sometimes at least 3,000 revolutions per minute, and any discrepancy in balance on this will reflect in what the operator is feeling here at the handles. So it's very, very important that maintenance on these machines to the rotary blade is carried out regularly. So we've gone through pedestrian operated machinery and the aspect of hand and arm vibration. Now, of course, with larger ride-on machinery, we have additional legislation which covers whole body vibration. And that's where we are not only taking into account 
what we will feel through the steering wheel, but actually the seat and the foot platform and the whole machine. So again, this is an area which is very, very important. If you're sitting on this machine for three or four hours and you're holding the steering wheel, you don't want a tingling through there, through your feet, or actually through your body itself. So hence, as manufacturers again, we measure whole body vibration levels. Don't forget, of course, just that aspect of holding the steering wheel. Gloves are a very, very important part of that process when using machines outdoors every day. So, for any ride-on machine, whole body uh, vibration levels are within the operator's instruction manual, just as they are for the smaller handheld equipment that we looked at earlier on. This machine is obviously a ride-on cylinder mower, and within the operator's instruction book, there will be the relevant levels. Now, in point of fact, the book is here. We actually give three readings. So we're giving initially the maximum acceleration levels through the steering wheel. That's actually 0.67, which is very, very low. We then have whole body acceleration level. That's within the seat area itself. This is 0.72 on this particular machine. And we have whole body acceleration level vibration levels for the foot plate. Uh, and that happens to be one. So combined together, that machine you know, can comfortably be used for eight hours within a working day. So here we have an example of a ride on cylinder mower. We were talking about the vibration levels on that. Coming over this side, we have an out front rotary mower. This will have gone through the same stringent tests with sensing equipment mounted to steering wheel, foot plate, and a seat to ascertain what the vibration levels are. This would be taken on grass and also with the blades running at full speed, as would have been done on the cylinder mower version as well, whether walk behind or ride on. So we get a fairly accurate appraisal of what the vibration levels are. That information again will be in the instruction book which comes with the machine, or any information is readily available on the website, as it is for many other manufacturers within the ground care industry. Being an out front rotary, it has obviously rotary blades on it, so there are three under that deck. They are just a subject to being balanced and kept in good condition, just as they are on the walk behind machines that we referred to earlier on. So, when it comes to hand and arm vibration levels, we as a manufacturer do everything we can for when the machine is new, but once it's out in the field, it's up to you to maintain them to the required levels and standards to keep those hand and arm vibration levels or whole body vibration levels to the minimum. Thank you.